what would be most useful for you today? So I am just kind of starting my journey in um, studying for their LSAT and I'm just trying to be as regimented as possible with my studies and um, I guess try to come up with a game plan of how to achieve that. Um, so I guess that's why I'm speaking with you. Um, just want to see what your ideas are on resources, um, scheduling. Also, I'm not sure if you personally do tutoring, like one-on-one -on -one tutoring. So interested in um, hearing more about that as well. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So when are you taking the LSAT? So I was planning for March because um, I figured that gives me a good three to four months to study. Yeah, that's a good target timeline. I typically recommend if you're starting from scratch to spend five to six months in order to achieve your fullest potential on the LSAT. Okay. The other thing to be aware of is that March is already too late for this cycle anyway. So mm -hmm. you might as well take it a little bit later. Take it later. And apply okay. to the beginning of next cycle. Got it. So that's my general recommendation there. Aim maybe for June or July and then apply at the very beginning of the cycle in the fall. And that way also you'll be able to retake again in the fall if you want to and still apply exactly. relatively early. Exactly, yeah, because um, I have been getting some feedback um, that it's better to wait till fall 20 next cycle. Um, I was aiming to take it in March and apply for fall 2020, but I've been hearing some feedback that that's maybe not advisable just due to scholarships and um, if they do rolling admissions, that can lessen my chances of getting admitted. Um, so I guess based on what you just said, you would recommend me to delay um, until the next cycle. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Um, now, as far as I'm trying to um, get some information on tutors, different tutoring services, what um, do you do specifically with that? Um, I just feel like for me personally, having somebody to keep me accountable is going to be something that I need personally. Um, so what types of services do you offer with that? Yeah, sure. So I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching where we're mm -hmm. not simply walking through every single LSAT problem under the sun. We're taking mm -hmm. the most difficult problems you've recently encountered. Could be a game, a passage, a logical reasoning question, and we go deep on them. We really analyze them in mm -hmm. excruciating detail so that you can figure out exactly where your misunderstandings are stemming from. In okay. the logical reasoning, the stimulus, the question stem, the choices, we're helping you to better understand the questions from the test maker's perspective. But okay. since you're starting off from scratch right now, I would mm -hmm. recommend that you take some time to build the fundamentals first. Get a solid mm -hmm. foundation in each section of the exam so that when you do pursue coaching or tutoring, you can go in with more specific questions in mind and make Got better it. use of the time. Exactly. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Um, because that is kind of one of my questions. It's it's seems like a daunting task for me right now, and I kind of don't know where to start. Um, so you know, I've picked up a couple of books here and there based on recommendations. So um, that leads me to one of my questions as to where should I start. You know, I don't know, should I take a diagnostic first and kind of see where I am and take it from there? Or should I do some reading first on different materials and then take a test at that point to kind of gauge, you know, where I need to improve? Yeah, those are great questions and they're important ones. I typically recommend not taking a diagnostic because the results are often discouraging. They tell you what you already know, which is that you haven't studied yet and you don't know the LSAT yet. But it's like a foreign language. You can learn it. It just mm -hmm. takes time to build the familiarity. If you yes. really want to take one to have it as a baseline to measure your progress later, you can do that, but definitely take the results now with several grains of salt. Okay. Now, as for how to use the various books, the exams, of course, should be your focus. The actual official LSAT prep tests published by the Law School Admission Council, they're available in books of 10 exams for about 20 bucks each. The various guides and textbooks can also be useful. Just make sure that they're not overcomplicating things for you. Mm -hmm. And the general framework I recommend in terms of studying is read a textbook chapter or watch a course video covering the basics of a certain mm -hmm. question type. Then do several questions of that type. Okay. So this is actually a framework underlying my LSAT study schedules, the study plans. I have day-by-day -day plans breaking it down for you so that you know exactly what to be doing 
every mm-hmm. single day over the course of your prep. And they're oriented around this five-step approach I call the laser approach to LSAT studying. Mm-hmm. Laser is an acronym standing for learning, accuracy, sections, exams, and review. So learning is that theory. Accuracy is doing individual questions by type. S is for sections, doing individual timed 35-minute sections to work on your pacing. Okay. E is for exams and endurance, doing full-length five-section exams. And then R is for review. So you don't want to do the exams too early, and you certainly don't want to neglect the review. The mm-hmm. earlier parts where you're doing questions by type and learning the basics is really, really important to take some time there. Okay, got it. And you said that your specific study plans break down um, the, I guess, study schedule by sections or by types? Exactly. So we have phases devoted to games, reasoning, and reading comp. And within each of those, we have subtypes. So we have ordering games, grouping games for logical reasoning. Of course, there's necessary assumption, flaw, strength, and weaken, must be true, and so on. And so we're targeting each question type first before approaching them in the context of an entire section. Okay, understood. Um, Now, typically, what would you say is a a typical schedule um, for studying? You know, an hour a day, two hours a day, a certain amount of hours per week? What do you recommend? There's really no hard and fast rule on this other than not doing too much or too little. So seven Mm -hmm. hours a day is too much. 10 minutes a day is probably too little. I recommend Mm -hmm. 10 to 15 hours per week on average, assuming you have other obligations. But Mm -hmm. if you can do more, that's great. Just don't burn yourself out and fit it in where you can before work, during lunch, after work, during downtime, maybe more on the weekends, Mm -hmm. wherever you can fit it in. Okay, perfect. Um, I I don't think I have any other questions. Um, Like I said, that's pretty much the gist of where I am. I'm still, you know, in the early stages, just trying to gather information before I actually um, make a game plan. So in terms of um, one-on-one coaching or tutoring, would you be able to email me that more details on that information or? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Okay, perfect. Um, I don't think I have any other questions besides maybe if there's I don't know what I don't know at this point. So I don't know if there's anything that you would um, give me as advice or uh, moving forward, a kind of game plan or anything that I didn't ask that you feel like is something relevant I should know. Sure. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll send you a link to the study plans because those will answer a lot of general questions about how to get started. And then aside from that, of course, use the free resources on my site watch the YouTube channel, listen to the podcast. I've put out tons of free information that's very general in nature to help you get started on there. And mm-hmm. then if you find it useful, then reach out and we can talk about the one-on-one coaching or talk about the courses okay. or other more advanced resources for you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Um, you answered a lot of questions for me. Um, so I'll definitely check out everything that you send over. Of course, glad to help. And before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um... The fact that, um, and I, I kind of knew this just for myself, the fact that you have to target, um, you know, certain questions and kind of break it down piece by piece. Um, and that to me overall has been, I guess, what I'm learning is the key to kind of beat the LSAT or, or get a good score. Great. Fantastic. Well, I'll send over those resources and look forward to being in touch. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Steve. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.